Are you wasting your time on DoorDash? You very well may be and not even know it. Drivers share hacks with me all the time that they think work, but in reality, it's just preventing them from making more money. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna share what those hacks are and how they work against you. When things go sideways, many drivers' response is the wrong one. How you handle a situation not going your way can determine whether you're going to continue to earn money or whether you stop yourself in your tracks. What's going on everybody? I'm Zach Drives Fast for the Rideshare Guy. And in this video, we're gonna talk about common ways that drivers waste their time and cost themselves money without even realizing it. In this business, time is money. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Every time you fall victim to one of these time sucks is a time that you're making yourself unavailable to accept another order. Let's start with the first one, chasing hotspots. Will you get more offers at hotspots? Possibly, but not necessarily. And admittedly, that's a bit of a trick question. Ultimately, this just boils down to your market and the specific hotspot. Being is that super not helpful. Let me elaborate a little bit. A hotspot on the DoorDash app is nothing more than a restaurant that recently had an order placed, not a restaurant with orders in the queue. And chances are that order's already in another driver's car. But would you be wasting your time to drive to that hotspot anyway? Maybe. Being is that every market is different, I can't tell you whether you'd be wasting your time, but I can tell you what to look out for. If the hotspot listed in the app is close to a bunch of restaurants that are open, then no, you're probably not wasting your time. However, what would be a waste of time is if you saw a restaurant listed as a hotspot that you almost never see orders from and then drive to it. Remember, the orders are not in the queue. They're likely already in the car. I did a deep dive on this in another video, so I'll keep this part brief. But if you want to know what your true hotspots are, download the DoorDash customer app and look for restaurants that are running promotions like fee free delivery or buy one get one free. Those will typically be your true hotspots. Every time you chase a hotspot, you're driving empty miles, putting wear and tear on your car, and wasting your own gas. I'd argue that you'd be better off positioning yourself around a bunch of restaurants that are not listed as hotspots rather than one restaurant that is listed as a hotspot. Driving from restaurant to restaurant chasing hotspots isn't the only way that a driver can waste their time. You can waste your time inside a restaurant also. Number two, waiting for orders that are taking too long. If you're anything like me, you'll wait for an order for five or 10 minutes and then feel like you're committed because unassigning it means that you aren't gonna get paid anything. Admittedly, this is something that I still struggle with, but ask yourself if waiting for that order is ultimately gonna cost you more money in the long run. Waiting too long means potentially losing out on better paying orders. However, I have found a workaround that works incredibly well. For starters, I'm always friendly to restaurant employees, and that sets the precedent that I'm never going to be belligerent when they give me a realistic time expectation. Recently, what I've started doing is when I'm told that the order isn't quite ready, I ask, realistically, how long is that order going to take? Adding that one word in there, realistically, usually garners a pretty accurate time estimate. We've all heard that the order is going to be five or 10 minutes or that the order is being bagged up and then proceed to wait another 20 minutes. It's always frustrating when we get those time estimates that are nowhere near accurate. So instead, try my method and thank me later. I've heard from many drivers that they have a five minute rule. If it's not out in five minutes, they're gone regardless. Well, I don't think that that's a problem necessarily, I would encourage you to create your own formula for how long you're willing to wait based on order pay and the drive distance. Before we get into a formula, we first need to talk about minimums. My minimums are $6 going two miles or less. For example, if I accept a $6 order that's going two miles or less and I walk in and it's not ready or I can't see it being bagged up, then I'm gonna unassign the order and move on. I'm not willing to entertain the notion of waiting an unknown amount of time for such a small payout. Ultimately, if you choose to wait a couple of minutes, it's up to you. But depending on the time of day and day of the week, waiting on that order, if it is your minimum, could ultimately cost you money. You may just be best to unassign it. Here's a formula that you may want to try using. Wait five minutes for every five dollars that the order pays past your minimum. For example, if the order pays five dollars, wait five minutes. If it pays ten dollars, wait ten minutes, and so on. Just don't forget to factor in drive time as well as direction. If that order is taking you away from a bunch of other restaurants, adjust your formula accordingly. Now, of course, if you choose to unassign that order, your completion rate will take a hit. Now, let me ask you this. Should your completion rate remain at 100%? Not if you respect your time. It is important to keep your completion rate high, but probably not only for the reason that you're thinking. Yes, of course, you do need to maintain at least an 80% completion rate on DoorDash to avoid deactivation. But there's another reason that when leveraged in the correct way will stop you from wasting your time and losing money. Your completion rate should be looked at as an insurance policy for yourself. 
In essence, a get out of jail free card. Having a high completion rate gives you the ability to unassign an order that is just more hassle than it's worth. A restaurant taking too long is a great time to utilize this strategy. And having a high completion rate gives you the buffer to walk away without penalty. Remember, from time to time, we are going to accept orders that are more trouble than they're worth. Maybe your customer has a Karen complex, and immediately after you accept the order, they start blowing up your phone for extras. Number three, dealing with Karens. We've all seen those videos on the internet of some Karen freaking out over something stupid. And as drivers, we can avoid that altogether. If you accept an order from a Karen, they are going to let you know in the form of a call or a text asking for something unreasonable. When you have a customer that's asking for something extra, they're essentially asking us as the driver to cover the cost, assuming it's something the restaurant charges for. Unassign these orders. It's not worth you forking out your own money or getting a bad rating when you're unwilling to comply with unreasonable requests. Another example of a Karen move is when a customer expects you to stand there while they inspect their order. It's a sealed bag. It's between them and the app, not them and you. In the past, I've gotten a couple of orders where in the delivery instructions, they emphasized the importance of me handing them the order. So I emphasized on assigning it. It's not worth the extra time and potential hassle to deal with a customer who doesn't understand something as simple as a sealed bag. The next thing we're going to talk about makes my skin crawl. Dealing with support when you don't have to. Towards the beginning of the video, I alluded to a mistake that many drivers make. Have you ever tried explaining something to somebody that just doesn't understand what you're trying to get at? I sure have. We're going to talk about when it actually makes sense to deal with support and when you're just wasting your time. I want to start out with the things that are a complete waste of your time. Admittedly, I cringe when I hear a driver say I called support to give them a piece of my mind. The same thing is true when I hear drivers say that they called support because they're not getting any orders. This is a colossal waste of your time. Wouldn't you rather be listening to an audiobook or vibing out to your favorite music instead of hearing a copy and paste response? Not to mention, it always adds insult to injury when their response doesn't help you out at all. It may sound cold, but calling support to discuss how you feel is never not a waste of your time. Support is literally the lowest person on the totem pole, but yet some drivers think that they have total control over their app access. And in reality, support scope is very limited. There are only three scenarios where you should ever contact support. Number one, to cover your own ass. Maybe you were delivering to a secure building, and then when you went to get buzzed in, they told you over the intercom system that they were at work a block away and needed you to deliver the order there instead. Being as that this conversation was had over a call box, support is not going to be able to look at text messages or pull a phone call to listen to the customer saying that. This is the time to contact support and have them contact the customer to get the new address. That way, you don't risk a contract violation. The second reason you should contact support is if the issue that you're dealing with directly affects your money or your app access. Over this last summer, I accepted a shop and deliver order on DoorDash for a few small random things, but upon checking the delivery instructions, the customer asked me to use the tip money to get them a pack of cigarettes. Now, usually I just would have unassigned the order. However, at the time, my completion rate was about 82% and I didn't want to unassign the order. I opted to call support, and the first person that I talked to didn't seem to see the issue despite me explaining the situation multiple times. Their response was that they were going to unassign me from the order with penalty. Nope that wasn't gonna fly. I ended up getting somebody else on the phone who was a little more competent and had a little more authority, and they ended up canceling the order, and with that came half pay and no hit on my completion rate. That was definitely worth the phone call to support. That preserved my app access and got me paid. Sure, I could have shot the order and delivered it without the extra item, but being as that the customer had tipped well for that item, I didn't want to open myself up to a one-star rating. Moving on, the third and final reason that you should ever contact support is if you have a safety concern. And I'm not talking about you getting carjacked or something like that. Never contact support first when a call to 911 is also warranted. Support can and will wait. I'm talking about scenarios where you're being asked to do something dangerous, like deliver an order to a squatter in a condemned motel. Yep, it's happened to me. Another good time to call support is if you have a customer getting aggressive with you. Think yelling, swearing at you, backing you up. You guessed it. It's also happened to me. The final example I want to give you is if there's a drunk person passed out across the sidewalk that you need to use to deliver your order and there's not a way around them. Yep, also happened to me. Ironically enough, all three of those situations happened during the day and I only had a little bit of heads up with one of them. Admittedly, I did deliver those groceries anyway and I did carefully step over the drunk guy. This was after I paused to make sure he was breathing and not turning purple or something. Being as that this was the one that I had a little bit of heads up for, 
I, for lack of a better term, sized the guy up before I got out of my car. Ultimately, I did feel comfortable enough to get the order delivered. Having said that, this or any other example I just gave would be a perfectly valid reason for you to contact support on your way back to the store and tell them that you need to have them unassign you from the order. When you contact support, do not ask them permission. Tell them what you are going to do and tell them what they are going to do to help you. We do not work for them. They are there to support us. I want to give you a couple of bonus tips that didn't neatly fit into one of the before mentioned categories. I want to share a couple of times during my early days on the apps where I wasted my time, so hopefully you can learn from my mistakes. During the lockdowns, it was extremely common in my market to see Grubhub orders that were paying 30 plus dollars. And this was the case one evening. I got an order picking up at my waiting place and driving to a community called Sudden Valley. I got the order picked up and delivered. However, when I got back into an area with cell service, I had a text from the customer waiting for me saying the name on the receipt was correct, but the items were wrong. I decided to call the restaurant and they confirmed that they had in fact put the wrong receipt on the bag. I decided to go back to the restaurant and then deliver the correct order to the customer. Good customer service? Yeah. Colossal waste of time? Also yeah. Delivering orders to that community takes about an hour round trip and I guarantee you there is not a single person that works at Grubhub that knows me by name or recognizes my sacrifice. A restaurant mistake ended up costing me two hours of my time on a weekend, during dinner. The appropriate response would have been to apologize to the customer for the inconvenience and point them in the direction of Grubhub customer service. Driving the correct order back out there was definitely not a good use of my time. The final thought I want to leave you with is drivers who don't adapt to changing market conditions. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that my minimums are $6 going two miles or less. Now, if it's a Friday night and it's raining sideways, there's going to be a lot of orders for me to choose from. Your minimum should fluctuate based on the likelihood of you getting a better order. Let's talk about market conditions for just a moment. If you're in a large metropolitan area, you may be better off to accept an order paying slightly less from a restaurant that's easy to pick up from, rather than an order that's paying slightly more in a downtown area. Think traffic. How long is it going to take you to navigate there and then back out of that area? An order paying $2 more is not worth it if you get stuck in traffic for 20 minutes. Remember, we do not earn an hourly rate, and time is literally money in this business. If you haven't done so yet, please do consider pressing the like button and subscribing to the Rideshare Guy. If you enjoyed this video, you may also enjoy this video where I talk about some sketchy situations I found myself in where I give some tips about how drivers can stay safer. I'm Zach Drysfast for the Rideshare Guy. Take care.